In this video, I'll share with you everything you need to know about JWT tokens. That will include what they are, how they work, and when you should use them. Now, before we get into that, I'll just tell you that my name is Tim. I'm a developer advocate for Linode, and I run the YouTube channel Tech with Tim, which has hundreds of other programming tutorials. I hope you're looking forward to this video. And with that said, let's dive in. So what is a JWT token? Well, JWT stands for JSON Web Token, which is an open standard that defines a compact and self-contained way for securely transmitting information between parties as JSON data. The information contained in a JWT token can be trusted because it is digitally signed using a secret key or a public-private key pair that uses RSA or ECDSA. JWT tokens are commonly used in authentication and authorization flows and are used by most popular websites that you visit frequently. Now, as a developer, it's important that you understand the basics of JWT tokens and when you should use them as they appear frequently and if you use them incorrectly, they can cause security vulnerabilities. Now, if you're considering hosting a website, API, or anything that requires JWT tokens and authorization, make sure to watch this whole video and check out Linode by Akamai, where you can get high quality and reliable cloud hosting options that you can depend on. All right, so now let's talk about when you should use JWT tokens. Now, as mentioned, there are two main use cases for these tokens. The first being authorization. Now, a typical authorization flow with JWT tokens involves a client signing in or registering for an account and then being issued a JWT token by the backend server. From now on, the client will submit this token with all of their future requests, and this is what will allow them to access routes, services, and various resources that are permitted by that token. Now, the next use case of JWT tokens is an information exchange. Because JWT tokens can be signed using a public-private key pair, you can be sure that the sender of the message or the data is who they say they are by validating their signature. Now, additionally, since a signature is calculated using the header and the payload, which we're going to discuss in just one second, you can verify that the content in the message has not been tampered with. Now, to better explain the intricacies of JWT tokens, let's have a look at the JWT token structure. So a JSON web token is made up of three parts, which are separated by periods. Now, the first is the header, the second is the payload, and the last is the signature. Let's start by discussing the header. Now, the header typically consists of two parts. The first part is the type of token. The second is the type of algorithm being used. Now, the contents of the header are base64 URL encoded to make up the first part of the JWT token. Now, after that, we have the payload. The payload is what contains the claims. Now, the claims are statements about an entity, client, and any additional data. There are three main types of claims. Registered claims, public claims, and private claims. Now, registered claims are predefined and recommended claims that state information like the issuer of the token, the expiration time, the subject, and potentially the audience. Now, public claims are custom claims that can store any information that you like. Now, private claims are also custom claims that are created to share information between parties that agree on them, and these are neither registered or public claims. Now, to better illustrate what I mean by this, let's have a look at a sample payload. So you can see here that in this payload, we have information about the user. This is the username. We have the fact that they are an admin, and then we have the expiration time in a Unix format for this token. It's worth noting that after this expiration time, the user will need to request another token, which we'll get into later. So in this example, we have three different claims. Each of these fields is a claim and will give our user different permissions on our website. Okay, so one thing that's worth noting now is that although the information in a payload is safe from being tampered with, it can be read by anyone. So keep this in mind and make sure you only store sensitive data in your payload if it's encrypted. Now note that encrypting and signing are different mechanisms. Encryption is gonna convert your data into a form where it cannot be read without being decrypted. Well, signing will simply create a string that can be used to validate that the data has not been tampered with. To better explain this, let me discuss a signature in more depth. So to generate a signature, you take the encoded header, that base64 URL encoded header, the encoded payload, a secret key, and the algorithm specified in the header. Next, you use the algorithm to sign the token. Now, the signature can then be verified by the receiving party to ensure that the message wasn't changed. 
Now, the verification process involves determining if the signature is valid for the given message and the given header. This means the users can determine if the message associated with the signature has been tampered with without having access to the secret or signing key. This is similar to what happens when transactions are verified on blockchain networks using only the sender's public key. Okay, so to wrap up this section, let's have a look at a sample JWT token. We have three strings. The first is a base64 URL encoded header. The second is another base64 URL encoded payload. And the last is the signature. And they're all separated by periods. Now this format provides a compact and easily parsable form of data that can be easily used in HTML and HTTP environments. Okay, so now that we know a bit more about JWT tokens and their structure, let's look at how all of this works. So a user may come to our website that is hosted on Linode and then enter their login credentials. Our server then verifies the credentials and returns a JWT token that contains claims with the user's permissions for our site. This JWT token kind of acts as the credential for our user as they interact with our website throughout their entire session. Now, since this JWT token acts as a form of credential, we need to be very careful how we store it. We should never store a JWT token in local storage or session data. It needs to be stored in a secure location in the user's browser. Now, typically we store JWT tokens in a HTTP only cookie, which is automatically sent with our HTTP requests, but is not accessible from JavaScript browser code. Regardless, now that we have stored this JWT token, we continue to use it with all of our requests by sending it to the server through an authorization header. Now, it's possible that this will be done automatically for you, depending on the libraries that you're using, but you may also need to do this manually. So if you are a developer and you're dealing with these tokens, you may want to be aware of what an authorization header looks at. So I'll throw that up on the screen. We have authorization, colon, bearer, and then whatever the JWT token is. Now, passing this to a website or server will act as your credential and allow you to access the routes and services that you have permission to. Now, the last thing to mention here is that JWT tokens typically have some kind of expiry date. When a token expires, it can no longer be used as a credential. Now, this means that the user would need to re-authenticate by, say, signing in again to get a new valid token or use something known as a refresh token. Now, I'll avoid the details of refresh token for now and simply tell you that this is an additional token that may be used alongside the access token or the main JWT token when a user authenticates. This token can be sent to the server to get access to a new valid access token without requiring the user to sign in or authenticate again. So with that said, that pretty much wraps up this video. Now it's worth noting that there's all kinds of libraries, tutorials, and frameworks available online that can help you implement JWT tokens into your project. For example, OAuth has all kinds of resources on their website. Now lastly, if you are thinking about implementing any type of cloud technology, then make sure you check out Linode for the best hosting options. Thanks very much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you in another.